Uh, the idea is that we now move to the to the panel discussion. Uh, so the experts uh, that uh, have joined us today uh, have uh, uh, we've uh, we want to ask them the, these uh, four questions. Uh, but we will start with the first one. Um, so based on the presentations earlier, how would you describe the societal impacts of research data used for migration studies? And I, I would like to, in, to uh, ask Dimitri uh, to give us a first uh, short uh, answer to, to this first question. Dimitri, the floor is yours. I think you're muted. Sorry, uh, unmuting myself. Thanks. Uh, I think that the real impact that scientific studies can have here in the field of politics, in the field of um, yeah, making it public knowledge, being part of the public discussion, is to add a dimension of quality and transparency. Because everything is put out in the web, everything is transparent, and we can actually reference um, policies against scientific data. And that's really a great way to use and leverage those tools in the process of policy making. Thanks, Dimitri. Uh, so you, you highlighted the quality and transparency uh, as impact. Meredith, can you contribute to that? Yeah, I, I would just like to add that, um, you know, I, I agree with what Dimitri said, but um, also sort of to, to add on to it, you have that um, research and migration studies, they have these impacts on society in a way that uh, we're bringing in uh, with the EMM survey registry, with the QDB, we're also bringing in policymakers, um, people that are active in civil, civil society, um, and trying to actively share our research with them in ways that um, can really bring in um, these non-traditional audiences to our research. Thanks. So you, you're highlighting the fact that you connect uh, with your communities to the policymakers. I think that's a very interesting point you make there, uh, Meredith. Um, Dimitra, can you provide us with the service uh, provider's perspective on this yeah, question? I would say that uh, in relation to what uh, Dimitri and Meredith has, have just said, our commitment as service provider is to collect and distribute the best way we can this data and because of course the research community is the first uh, target group but then we need to have because we relate migration to the generalized crisis economic and social crisis to inform citizens and service providers can play this role as well towards different target groups so you are the bridge between research and uh, the civil society in this case. we hope to be the bridge one thanks, for this. thanks a lot, Dimitra. Steph, I, I pass over yeah. to you for the next yeah, question. Move, yeah, thanks a lot, Marika. So moving on to the next question, how important are high quality data for cross-disciplinary research on migration? And I'd like to start with our mad with this first question. Thanks. Uh, thank you very much, Stephanie. Uh, it's a very important and good question about the quality of data and also cross-disciplinary research. Uh, two things are important here. The first point is, uh, as I mentioned in my uh, presentation, the existing data are collected uh, in, a, in every re region uh, using different methodologies, uh, different techniques, different ways, and different countries, different regions. And then when it comes to international data projection, uh, they sometimes or mostly they are put in, in the same way, only they, they change like the definitions or the names. And then this creates a lot of problem. Also, uh, from what I saw in the, in the data, the, how the data is presented, it's people who are statisticians or who are from a very specific uh, discipline. Uh, they collect this data, they work with this data. And then people who use the data are different from different background and then there is a disconnect between these people and uh, and then uh, they really don't know how the data come into existence and when they analyze data they, they generalize or they present results without even knowing how data come into existing and that is a very important point we have to consider while we are doing research or we are doing and uh, and uh, as, as a hummingbird we are also trying to bring these things together and uh, it's, it's really important to have high quality data but not only high quality data but 
to also know where the data came from. And that gives us a lot of information uh, to, to be careful with pre presenting our results. Thanks, thank you, you. Ahmad. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. So the importance of, the, of both quality and knowing the sources of data. And I was just wondering if the disconnect could, might be intentional in some cases. So, um, Dimitri, if you could give us your viewpoints on this question from a uh, hi. service provider. Hi, Dimitri. Thanks. Thank you, Stephanie. Again, at two levels. I mean, we try to uh, render uh, fair data uh, to to any interest user. And uh, of course, we are trying to make this data uh, fair. So we have these different services to help researchers and to uh, disseminate this uh, data uh, for further use and for information as well, because I do believe that informed citizens is the key to to deal with uh, migration phenomena and all these uh, societal challenges. Yeah, lovely, Dimitri. Thank you. I couldn't agree more. So the floor is yours, and Marie, for question number three. Thanks, Stephanie. Uh, do you know if there's any questions for the speakers in the chat? Because the, obviously, we, we also have a few minutes to, to address those. Um, Not so far, but they are. Everyone is welcome, to, you know, people online can pop the questions either in the chat or in the Q&A panel, both at the bottom of your screen. Don't be shy, if you have a question, please ask. And if we can't answer it today, we will get back to you with more answers. So thanks. Thanks, Stephanie. Uh, so then going on with the third uh, question, how important is the support from service providers and data experts for your research workflow? Um, I think, Peter, you, you've done already uh, a nice presentation on this. Do you want to comment on this, uh, on this question? Uh, yeah, thank you, Marike. I just wanted to say that uh, actually my entire presentation was about that, but I would just like to uh, point out once again one more thing. It's not just the support from service providers, but the support from a network of service providers. At least in our case, this is extremely important because, as said before, uh, you can point the 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 people from, from project team to, to the national uh, service providers, which can much easily, easier help and tackle the, the certain issues that, that uh, arouse from, from, from the research. That's all I wanted to, to comment. Thanks, so that is very interesting, the, the cross-national aspect that you're, that you're highlighting here. And also from your, uh, from your presentation, I found very interesting the mention of the real life experience of the experts, both on the ground as, as, from, uh, as those that have uh, contributed to the DMAG. Um, I also wanted to ask Ami uh, to, uh, to give her view on this, uh, this question. Sure, um, so I guess the research flow that uh, work flow that I'm in going to be talking about is the EMM survey registry. So um, as I mentioned during the presentation, our ethnic uh, migration studies data community actually includes um, service providers, uh, notably like Dimitri Pradner from OSTA. We also have GISIS, CBSP, EKE colleagues. Um, and what that, um, I'm very fortunate to have had these individuals participate and be involved in, in the whole entire workflow process because they've been able to do a, a number of important things. Uh, just to illustrate some examples, they've been able to point us to what kind of services already exist so that when building the EMM survey registry, we were really thinking about how we can add value to the research uh, world as opposed to kind of just replicating something else um, and slightly modifying it um, in terms of a service. Um, they've also were really important in helping us understand how we should structure our metadata schema and also making sure that we were designing it in a way that it would be made interoperable with other uh, service providers. So we did make that deliberate decision to ensure that our metadata schema would be mapped on nicely to DDI Codebook, which is the standard that um, is recommended for uh, social sciences survey research. Um, they were also instrumental in, in making us understand uh, how we should apply licenses both for the tool itself as well as the metadata. Um, so to maximize uh, usability for both, we, we ultimately decided based on the guidance that we provided to utilize the Creative Commons licenses. Um, and then finally, um, 
We were also provided guidance on how we can draft and provide an appropriate use policy for the registry as well as its metadata. And we actually were able to leverage use policies that exist for the SESTA data catalog as well as those offered by the SESTA service providers. So that's just a quick uh, overview of how exactly they were able to inform uh, the various key decisions that we had to make in developing the EMM survey registry. Thanks a lot, Ami. I think the here also what is very interesting that you mentioned is that they really helped you leverage on existing, uh, uh, so building on top of, of existing uh, results rather than duplicating, so really adding value to the research uh, environment already. Uh, and I think the long list of, uh, of topics that you mentioned that they helped you with in, in uh, with the metadata scheme and the metadata ma management plan licenses, I think they are very illustrative of all the services that the, the service providers can help you with and the DMAC. Uh, thanks for that, Ami. Stephanie, uh, over to you for the fourth yeah. question. Yeah, thank you, Malika. Yes, yeah, so I think this is an, an excellent example of how the two sides come together to create real value for society. So um, our last question is about what, what advice would you give to researchers trying to build on or reuse the huge amount of already existing data on migration? The first question is for Dimitra. Thanks. This first person, sorry, panel. Thank you, Stephanie. I would like to mention once again that researchers can uh, can find trusted sources as a first step, step when they implement or they design their uh, their project, their research, their research question, etc. Uh, says the members are there and they can help. Uh, another uh, another important tool that we have, and it can help uh, to to use and reuse uh, data, is uh, the ELSST, the European uh, Language uh, Thesaurus that we have uh, within CESDA, and they can navigate along uh, different terms, concepts, and data sets, and. A proposition is to get in contact with says uh, the members with the service providers because when you when you look and you are uh, try you are trying to to investigate a new or an older question it's it can be a mutual relation uh, uh, ship and an economy of scale as economists say it can. Uh, help you and you can uh, economize the uh, time uh, in doing that. Thank you very much. So, um, Ahmad, what would be your viewpoint? Uh, what would be your advice to researchers? Uh, thank you very much. I think uh, uh, Demetra covered most of the, the points that I wanted to, to say. Uh, I mean, CISDA and there are other platforms that they are providing data and uh, we could uh, receive uh, support from them uh, in order how to correctly use or reuse the data that is projected there. But beyond that, uh, the data that exists in the big platforms, um, I, uh, I have been uh, looking into those data and then I try to trace those data where they come from for my own research. Uh, what I find interesting is that the data, most of the time it's the same data with different names or different structures or different uh, uh, definitions uh, in the bigger platforms. So for researchers, I think if you want to be accurate in, in or to understand your data better, now once you, you should always use the bigger platforms as a source to find now, or to trace your data from the from where it comes from, and then there you can see the metadata, or you can even contact the the data providers to to see to see that. For example, sometimes data is projected at the international level. Then when you find it in the uh, website of the national level, then you even you see that it's sometimes in the local level and municipal level that the data was provided. So it really depends on the level of evaluation or the level of uh, analyzing the data. But I really suggest that uh, uh, as a researcher, it's always uh, good to, to know where the data comes from and the, the source of, of data before uh, like drawing con conclusions. Thank you. Thank you, Ahmad. Yeah, yeah. and um, Dimitri, what would be your viewpoint? 
from this perspective about uh, advice to researchers? I think the most important part is something that was already highlighted by Dimitra. We need to speak a common language and use services like the uh, European Social Science Language Thesaurus, which helps us to find common words to identify relevant research and really work on harmonization as the topic of migration is transnational. It's not something that can be limited in one country and we need to be able to move between countries, between different surveys and find a common language for documentation. We know that English as uh, lingua franca is something that's an issue in the social sciences that's highly discussed and debated, but it helps us to get insights and work with data. And anyone who tries to build a survey or build up into the research that is done should spend the time to make the research documented in English, documented in a way that people can build up on it. And as Ami at the beginning of her presentation or in the middle of her presentation highlighted, there's the Austrian immigrant survey of 2016 where it was personally involved where we actually had the issues that we needed to painfully recreate every step and every item and every structure that we wanted to compare. And tools like the EMM survey registry, the SESTA data catalog, they helped to make our lives as researchers so much easier. And I really want to stress this. Use this um, offerings, use these tools, research will improve and your uh, chances will improve to create great research. Yeah, lovely. Thank you, uh, Dimitri. Um, and you mentioned Armin. I would like to, we've got a few minutes, Marit, if we can pass the floor for a final takeaway also from Armin and then Meredith. Thanks. Just a really quick one. Thank you. Thank you. Um, sure. Uh, let me go ahead and restart my video. So I guess for me, what just listening to the various presentations and getting to learn how um, all these different projects have leveraged both the Accessa Data Catalog and the uh, DMAG, it's really clear that these types of services are, are instrumental to improving how research is done within the social sciences. Um, and I think I'm also inspired to kind of think more about how we can create linkages across these different um, services, because I think um, there, there's a lot of opportunity to leverage all these uh, services together to, to to do effective research. Um, I guess I'll stop there and pass it off to Meredith. Sure, and I'll just, because um, I know Dimitri mentioned harmonization, which is something that's related to the project I'm working on, where we're actively working on post-harmonizing data, um, survey data, and so um, I think it's it's really nice to hit on that because um, these surveys that have been produced do represent a wealth of knowledge and it's really as we know it's very expensive in time and resources to launch a survey program so we absolutely do want to leverage the existing survey data as much as possible in order to really take advantage of what's already been produced and produced well so um, if I were to give advice to researchers who are trying to build on this, it would also be to, to reach out to your network. There's already um, researchers that are working on building on this, that are working on post-harmonization or pre-harmonization. And so reach out within that network and um, build these collaborations because they've been hugely valuable to what we've been doing so far and they will continue to be so. Yeah, and we can only applaud all of you for the work that you're doing. It's absolutely fundamental, important. I would have three, well, not three words, a very short sentence to wrap up, Marika, and then you could perhaps give your own view. Um, I think the message is connect with SESDA and also create these collaborations, get the data sets you need and cite the data so it can be reused by others. I'll leave the final words for you, to you, Marika. Uh, I, I couldn't agree more with that, Stephanie. Uh, I think uh, what is also important to show that uh, today you've been presented with a few of the 30,000 uh, data sets that are in the CESA data catalog. Uh, so there's a wealth of information there that you can use for your or can access uh, for your research. Uh, so go out and, and, and find uh, what would be useful for your own research. And, and as our, our experts today already said, I mean, use, reuse, and if you need any help with the data management uh, in your uh, research, uh, please connect to the national service providers. They are absolutely um, there to help you. 
Um, I think um, what rests us to say, uh, Stephanie, uh, do we have a poll? Do we have time for a poll? Or, uh... I think we can wrap up. I think we're in a good place. And thank you to the audience and for answering those um, registration questions. I think, I think the last word should be to the next global challenge that we'll be looking at next week on the 14th of October. And it will, we'll be looking at another really key topic, uh, which is on climate change. So please register for this um, if you're interested in it. And, and we'll see you next week, hopefully, on the next roadshow. Thanks a lot, everyone. Uh, thank you very much to our speakers, yeah. Dimitra, yeah. Dimitri, Meredith, Ami, uh, Peter. Uh, Ahmad, uh, I think uh, you've you really provided with us uh, with great insights. Thank you for all your hard work on this. Thanks a lot. Yeah. yeah thank, thank you. Everyone. Thank, thank you very you much. Everybody. Thanks thank you. for having us. Bye. Bye.